Welcome to this tutorial about the Red Hat Development Suite. The Red Hat Development Suite includes Red Hat Enterprise Linux, or RHEL, VirtualBox to run the virtual machine with RHEL, Vagrant, which will manage the process of lo loading and running the VirtualBox, Docker to run Linux containers, Kubernetes, which helps manage those Docker containers, and OpenShift the Red Hat Platform as a Service. So let's go ahead and see how you download the installer. The first thing you want to do is navigate to our URL. It's redhatloves.net. That's going to redirect you to the Red Hat Developer Program, the .NET section specifically. From there, on the right hand side of the top, you can click the Downloads button. That takes you to all the downloads available to you. Scroll down just a little bit and you'll see the Red Hat Development Suite, in this case version 1.3. Click the download button. You'll be prompted to sign in. If you don't have a login, it's not a problem. You can set one up. It's just email and password. Once you've done that, it'll take you to the download page, detect the user agent and operating system, and automatically launch the download. This download is not the development suite. This is the development suite installer which is about 46 megabytes. With the installer downloaded, we can go ahead and run it. So the first step, we log in. The username and password are the same ones we used when we downloaded the installer. This is your Red Hat identity, and you're going to want to remember this. Let's go ahead and use the installation folder that's defaulted and click Next. On this step, the, the installer checks your system to see what you have installed already. It also gives you the option to not install certain parts. For example, I'm a .NET developer. I'm not going to use the OpenJDK or the Red Hat JBoss Developer Studio. So as soon as this check is done, I'm going to unselect those items because I don't need to download. Okay, I unselected those. In your case, you'll probably download everything else. In my case, I already have VirtualBoss and Sigmund, so I only need the Container Development Kit and Vega. Now the install is running. When it's finished, we'll see the next step, which is opening the virtual machine. Okay, the next thing is to start the virtual machine. So let's go into PowerShell and navigate to the folder where we install everything. If you use the default, it's going to be the same as on the screen here. Once we get there, you want to run the command vagrant up. That's going to start the virtual machine. During the startup process, you'll be prompted to ask if you want to register the machine. Go ahead and say yes to that and then you'll type in your username and password from Red Hat, the same one you used when you did the download. Once that's all done, you're going to go back to a PowerShell command line, but your virtual machine will be running. So when you get back to the command line, you can run the command vagrant status if you want to and prove that the virtual machine is running. To be honest, I've never had a time where it didn't start. Once you run Vagrant Status, the next thing you want to do is run Vagrant SSH. And that's going to take you into your virtual machine. You're going to drop down, so to speak, to the RHEL command line. And, for example, you can do an LS, see what's in the folder, the directory. Do a Who Am I to see how you're logged in, which will be Vagrant. That's the user ID. And then you can type Exit to get out of your virtual machine but it'll still be running. So you're back to PowerShell. You want to stop the virtual machine. You type in Vagrant Halt, and that executes a graceful shutdown of your VM. Once that's done, you can run Vagrant Status if you want to. Make sure everything's stopped. And there you have it. You've downloaded, installed a virtual machine. You've gotten into it and out of it. 